Hey, my name is Emilio. Thank you so much for joining me today. Really appreciate you spending the time. We are gonna be looking at something really different today. Uh, we obviously focus a lot more on tech, tech heavy sort of videos, but we're now talking about a bit of music audio sort of recording. As you probably know, if you've watched any of my videos, I work in IT and I go through a lot of different topics, but today we're focusing on how to record a instrument. Perhaps you've got a guitar, you've got a piano, you've got a microphone, something, uh, and you wanna learn how do I plug that into my computer to actually be able to record something onto my computer. Before we do get into the video, please do remember to subscribe, clicking on that button on the bell so that you don't miss out on anything. So right here on my table, I've got two devices. I've got myself a uh, audio interface. This particular one is a Focusrite Scarlett audio interface. And essentially, as the name suggests, it lets me interface some sort of an audio device into my computer. So you run a couple of inputs into the front of the actual unit, whether that be a guitar cable, um, a microphone, right into the front, and then that then runs over a USB cable into your computer. The other option is something like this. This is a microphone. Now this particular one, this is a Blue Yeti microphone. A lot of YouTubers would use these just for standard podcasting uh, or for streaming, whatever it may be, even for recording their own stuff. And this itself has a USB out of it and that can run directly into a computer as well. And you can sing into this, you can talk into this, and that will let you record directly onto your computer. If you have another sort of microphone with what's called an XLR port on the bottom, you run an XLR cable, that would run into here, and then that would run into your computer. You can also just get yourself a microphone that has, for example, a, uh, you know, a normal audio jack uh, coming out of it, and you can run that into the side of your computer and do it that way. So let's give you the example of a guitar or a keyboard. Let's say you are a guitarist, or at least you have a guitar, an electric guitar. As you can see, I've got some in the background there. You may have a keyboard. You could run that, the jack, essentially it's called a TS cable, an instrument cable, out of your guitar and run it into something like this being an audio interface. This is then connected over a USB cable. Then you use some software on your computer to actually go and manipulate the sound and you input it into that and then you can do whatever you need to do within there and you record that little sample that you are doing that way. So you see that on the actual front of this digital interface, for example, I've got a one and a two input, All right? So the left one means I can run one device into that. You can see it's got a funny sort of connector there, but that's an XLR cable, or you can run a standard TS instrument or guitar cable into that, uh, either of those two and then that then converts it into the USB and that runs into the computer. And you can do that with inputs one and two. And there's actually a gain knob as well. That's essentially how much volume, how much gain you're getting into that particular input. You turn it up, you get more going into your computer. Then you've got on the very far right of the unit, you control the volume of the monitors or the speakers that are connected to this unit. Now, generally what we recommend is if you're looking at studio recording sort of stuff, you would have monitors as opposed to speakers. Now we can get into the technicalities, but generally a monitor give you more of a raw sound without all of the additional EQ, the actual changes to the bass, the treble, the mids that you would normally get out of standard speakers. But you can also run this into speakers on the very right there on the bottom, you've actually got a little headphone uh, picture there, which lets you then run that into speakers if you so choose to as well with the little volume up and down to actually control the volume of your speakers if you need to. The other thing you could do is you could run that cable into an amp, right, into an amplifier. Uh, again, whether this be guitar, whether that be keyboard, you can run it into some sort of an external amp, and then you get a microphone, something like this, or even a actual microphone, which is you know a Shure, S-H-U-R-E, is a very good brand of microphone that you can buy. You plug that into the front of the amp, this is an amp, by the way, and then that then runs via a cable that runs through a digital. Here, for example, we've got an amplifier. Um, I've got a Vox amplifier. This particular one is an AC-15, and you'll see that I've got the microphone just facing the actual front. So this uh, 
amplifier itself. Here is the speaker. Okay, you can sort of feel it with your hand and you generally just put the microphone just a little bit off the actual uh, off center from the actual speaker itself. And then that of course is then plugged into the back. Now this particular one, as I said, is a USB cable. So that would then run into my, uh, into my computer directly. Or if you've got an actual microphone with an XLR, which is generally what you would recommend for some sort of an amplifier microphone, you'd run that into here and then you've got an XLR coming out of the side of that, out of the back of that into your audio interface which then runs into your computer. So now that we are on our computer, uh, there's a few things that you can do right from here. Now, of course, you've got a built-in microphone on your laptop, on your desktop, whatever that may be, and you could potentially use that for talking, for singing, for playing an instrument, and then the microphone will pick that up. But of course, that's not the best way to do it because you're not gonna just get a very good quality. So once you've got your audio interface, or even a microphone. So this particular one being my Blue Yeti that is also connected into my computer for this recording. Uh, you can use either of those uh, as the way that you can, you know, I guess record into your computer. The other thing you need, of course, is, is you need some software. You need some software that is installed on your computer to actually be able to pick up your audio interface where your guitars, your microphones are plugged into, or some software that can actually record from an actual microphone like this, which is being a USB microphone. Uh, and then you sort of use all the tracks and you do what you need to do from a recording perspective. Now, um, out of the box, uh, the Mac comes with uh, a tool called GarageBand. Uh, you've probably seen it. Uh, if you haven't, you can go and check it out from the Apple App Store. Or in my case, you've also got uh, Pro Tools. This is called Pro Tools First. And this comes bundled with the actual Focusrite audio interface, which I have got. So either of those two will work. There are others. Um, there's also Logic, which is quite good. And also Adobe does some audio recording stuff as well. So the interfaces um, will look slightly different depending on what you're using. Um, you've got samples, you've got loops, you've got all of these sort of things that you can add into your actual mix. Um, and of course, anything that you're recording can also be edited. So you can crop and paste, you can cut sections off the song. Um, off a guitar riff that you are playing. You can trim that out. You can add different effects into it as well. So it makes it very, very easy to be able to go and manipulate uh, the sounds that are coming into your computer. What you can do is you can actually go and um, adjust the primary audio input into your computer, input and output. So you see that by default, MacBook Pro speakers are set up here. You've got your MacBook Pro microphone, which is the microphone that's built into your computer. And then you've got your Scarlett 2i2. Uh, so two, of course, being two inputs, two outputs, and that's the one that we're going to use. So we're selecting that as my output, and my input is also going to be my Scarlett 2i2. So input, of course, being the guitar, the microphone that is running into the front of the unit. Remember, we had one and two, and then the output being the actual outs from the back running into speakers or into a monitor um, speaker set. Uh, GarageBand, you also go and actually set within your preferences area. Uh, audio MIDI, so your output, your input, you'll see that my input by default is set as my Yeti microphone, uh, but you can go and select your Scarlett right in there, which is my audio interface. You've also got your MacBook Pro speakers, and then you've also got in here your output devices exactly the same. So you see that right out of there, you can actually adjust which one you want to actually use. And now within here, um, you'll see that down the very bottom under recording settings, you've got your inputs one and two. These of course correlate to the one and two inputs on the front of the unit. If you remember that there was two, so you could run your guitar into one, your, you know, your keyboards. If you've got a microphone in front of an amplifier, for example, that can then run over an XLR cable, um, for example, into the actual front of the unit being one or two or a microphone directly into one or two as well. Um, so I can select one in here. And then here are my tracks. So I go and create a brand new track. I can create a software instrument, which is quite cool. So right out of the box, um, you know, the, the GarageBand comes with options for you to create your own music, even using your keyboard. You can get what's called a MIDI keyboard as well with samples, with you know, drum pads and things like that. We can actually use the keyboard to actually record software based sounds. You're creating the music directly into uh, GarageBand with not actually a real 
audio or analog instrument. Um, then you've got your audio. Now, in our case, we want to do this. So you've got two options. You've got record using microphone or your line input or connect a guitar into your Mac and play that. Now here we've got a guitar created. So this is an actual you know, track. So I can go and create an actual audio vocals one there as well. And you'll see that uh, here my guitar, I've got access to go and change the actual amplifier. So how I want it to sound. And then I can actually go and change the controls, do some EQing as well. So adjust the, um, you know, the, the wavelength, the bass, the treble, the mids, etc. You can go and say voice. So you can adjust the actual voice that you want um, to come out. So if you don't, if you want to add some chorus effects, some delays, um, you want to change the pitch of your voice, you can do all of that right through here through all of the library and the tools. And then you've got a whole bunch of samples available, or loops available as well. So if you find something that's really nice in here, so for example, I can click on instrument. We're going to say we want a uh, drums. Okay, so I can grab that. I can then drag it into here. That is now got that drum playing in here. So then I just pick up my guitar and then my drums are behind it and you know, it sounds pretty good. All right, so I can just loop that over. I can go and change the sound. So let's say I want to add a bit more crunch, make it a bit dirtier. And then of course I can go and add a second one of these. And then just add a vocal track, sing or talk along. And as you can see, we can talk right into here and add this bit into the song. And as you can see, we can talk right into here and add this bit into the song. Nice and easy, beautiful. Being able to record right into our computer. We're using our Focusrite audio interface as well as our microphone right here, which is plugged straight in uh, to our computer as you need to. So I hope you learned something new. Maybe this is completely new territory for you. Maybe you've never recorded um, some sort of an instrument or your vocals into a computer, but hopefully now you know how to do that. Perhaps if you've done this before, I've given you some tips, uh, some ideas on how you could probably be doing this better or in a different way. Uh, either way, maybe let me know in the comments. And if you did like this video, do like it, give me a thumbs up and subscribe as well to my channel, Digital Byte Computing, clicking on the bell so that you don't miss out on anything. Thanks again for spending the time. We'll see you next time.